Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an HP 255 G5 laptop. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to get inside and all the various components you can access once you're in. So first thing, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip it over to access our bottom case screws. So you have these three screws along the bottom edge, these three screws here toward the middle, these two toward the upper middle, and then these two right here underneath your battery. Now to get your battery out, you're going to take both of these sliders and you're going to slide them into each other toward the center of the computer. Then you can slide your battery out by sliding it away from the computer. After getting all those screws out, there are two hidden screws underneath these two rubber feet here. So you right here on, on that line, so that top part stays, this bottom part from that line folds down. So you can peel that up and it will reveal a screw on either side. After taking all the screws out, you're going to take a small flat pry tool and you're going to go across the seam all the way around the computer to pry the bottom case off. Now this bottom case was a little bit of a pain, uh, so you're gonna have to be very firm. Go slow, uh, be patient, and don't put the pry tool too far into the computer. You can damage some internal components. Just keep it on the edge. And if you get stuck in one area, leave it, go around, and continue on in the other direction. After you get the bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of the computer. Now as a side note, guys, for any computer repair project, I always have my computer sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in the computer when you're working on it. If you need any help with tools or supplies for your project, there'll be a link above. Also below in the description, it'll show you many of the tools and supplies that I use in my shop. And I will also include in that link all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model, the 225 G5. Now here is your hard drive right here toward the upper right of the computer. It's held in by a hard drive caddy. That's this metal component that secures the hard drive into place. So we're going to have to remove that caddy first with the hard drive in it. There's a screw right here toward the top, screw right here in the bottom right, screw right here. After you take those screws out, this right here, that's your SATA connection, the hard drive connector cable. You're going to take this plastic component and pull it out of the hard drive right there. Be careful to only grip this plug right there. Don't grip the wires, you could damage it. But once you get that unplugged and these screws undone, you'll have released the hard drive caddy. And then there's two screws on either side. You can see them here, one there, one there, and two screws on the other side that hold the actual hard drive into the caddy. So that's how you access the hard drive, but if you want some extra hard drive information to look for a replacement or an upgrade, the type of hard drive you're looking for here has a SATA connection, which is what this is, S-A-T-A, -A, SATA connection. And this size hard drive is a 2.5 inch. That's a pretty standard size for older laptops. So that's what you'd be looking for to look for a replacement or upgrade is SATA connection, 2.5 inch. The actual storage size of the hard drive is up to you. Um, I believe most of these computers will come with a 500 gigabyte hard drive, so you can get that as a replacement. If you want to upgrade, you can go to a 750 uh, gigabyte, you can go to a terabyte hard drive. Um, also, if you're looking for a faster drive, they do sell solid state drives in this form. So you can get a SATA connection 2.5 inch solid state drive, either 500 gigabyte or a terabyte, and that'll fit into this port, into this caddy, but it would be much faster because it would give you the service of a solid state drive. Below in the description in that link I told you about, I'll have several options for replacement and upgrade hard drives as well as solid state drives. And I guess as a last side note to this repair, if you are replacing your hard drive, you will need to install an operating system onto it in order to use your computer. I will have two links below in the description. There'll be video tutorials showing you how you can install Windows 10 and how you can install Windows 11 onto an HP computer. Now here's your RAM right here. You have this port here with a RAM stick in it and many of you stock will have this extra port without a RAM stick in it. Now the way you operate RAM is there's two spring-loaded metal arms on either side. 
To get the ram stick out, you would gently pry those apart away from the ram stick. The ram stick will then release. Oftentimes it will even pop up a little bit and then you can slide it out of this plug right there. The way to get the ram back in, if you guys notice, there's a short plug here and a long plug there. So you can only put the ram stick in the right way. You can't put it in upside down. And then you get it in there, get it nice and flush and straight. Make sure this gold line is straight. And then you press down in the center and those arms will latch onto it and secure it in place. Now that's how you operate the ram stick. The information for the replacement or upgrade, if you're looking for it, this computer has a maximum capacity of 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, many of you stock will only have a four gigabyte stick. So that allows you to upgrade in, in, in a few ways. Um, below in the description in that link I told you about with all the upgrade and replacement parts, I will have a 16 gigabyte kit, which would be two eight gigabyte sticks uh, that would max out your RAM. I'll also include just a single eight gigabyte stick if you guys are looking to upgrade, but not necessarily max out. The RAM information here, this is DDR3L RAM, SDRAM. Uh, the stick that was in this computer was PCL-12800. I'll have that information below in the description. And I guess as a last side note with this RAM operation, I always tell my customers that RAM and the hard drive these are some of the cheapest and easiest upgrades you can do to a computer to get max performance out of it. So if you do nothing else, try to at least max out that RAM. Now your Wi-Fi card is right here toward the bottom of my screen. It's held in with one single screw right here toward the base in the middle. So when you remove that screw, the Wi-Fi card can then pull out of this port right there. You'll also have two antenna wire that run through this hinge assembly into the LCD assembly. Those are held on, those are just snaps. So those snap right up and off of the Wi-Fi card. To get those snaps back on, it can be a little tricky if you're not used to it. They do have to be at a perfect 90 degree angle so you can snap them back on. And if they're not at a perfect 90 degree and you push too hard, you can damage them. So just take your time, be patient, play with it, and you will be able to get those back on. I will have the Wi-Fi specs for this card below in the description. I'll also include a Wi-Fi replacement card in that link below that I told you about with all the replacement parts and tools. I guess as a last side note with a Wi-Fi card replacement operation, if you're having trouble seeing any Wi-Fi options, if you're having Wi-Fi issues, it could be that your Wi-Fi card is bad and needs to be replaced, but it also could be something else. It could be a software issue, a driver issue. Um, if you've already reset your router and that's not it, there'll be a video link above also below in the description on how to troubleshoot your Wi-Fi issues because you may not have to replace that card. So here's your CMOS battery right here, top left of my screen. It's a little silver round watch battery looking thing. Uh, what you would do here guys to get this out of that port, there's a space right here where you can take a small plastic pry tool and you can put some force to push it down in this direction because there are springs right here. So you can push this a little down, get the battery to slide under here a little bit more, come out from under these clips, and then you can put some upward pressure and pop this out once you slide it down. Be careful because this is really fragile, especially this part here that holds it down. If you put too much pressure to pop that up, you could snap this off and then that battery won't stay in place again after that. You'll have to get a, a, a new port. So be very careful taking that out. I will have a CMOS battery replacement option below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts for this model computer. So if you're looking for one, you'll be able to find it in that list. If you're here to reset BIOS this way, um, maybe you can't access BIOS the correct way um, and there's no factory reset options there and you're trying to reset BIOS like this, all you would have to do is leave that battery out for maybe 15, 20 seconds. That's usually sufficient to reset your BIOS system settings. Just keep in mind for those of you who are here to reset BIOS, that will reset your BIOS system settings, but in most cases it will not reset the BIOS password. I'll have more information below in the description on resetting your BIOS password, but keep in mind this operation most likely will not do that. As a last side note with this operation, if you're here, because your computer is not starting up, it's dead, it's not turning on, 
Um, this can be one of the troubleshooting methods to try to find out why your computer is not turning on, but there are several others. I will have a video link tutorial above, also below in the description, showing you how to troubleshoot a laptop computer that's not turning on to show you those other methods. So the speakers are pretty easy to access. You have this one in the top right of my screen, this one in the left of my screen. So those are your two speakers. This one doesn't plug into the motherboard. The wires run here all the way to this speaker. And then this speaker plugs into the motherboard right here. As a side note, guys, when you're reinstalling speakers, if you're replacing these, make sure you run them in the exact same way. Take a picture or something so you know the exact way to run it. Because remember, the bottom case closes and snaps in over here. So if your wires are not run exactly the way they should be, they could get crimped when you go to put your bottom case on and that could damage those wires. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you're dealing with wires in a computer, you never want to pull on the wires if at all possible. You want to just manipulate that plug. So this plug here, it has a grip on either side. You can use your fingernails or a pry tool to get that out of this port right there. You, you can push over here a little bit, push on the left, push on the right, and wiggle that right out of that port. And I guess as a last side note with a speaker repair, if you're seeing sound issues, maybe it, it's too low, it sounds bad, maybe your speakers aren't working, it is possible that your speakers are bad and need to be replaced, but it could be something else. It could be a software issue, an update issue, a driver issue. Um, so up top, as well as below in the description, I'll have a video tutorial on how to run all of your updates, make sure your computer and your drivers and everything are completely updated so you can rule that out before you start opening up your computer coming in here to physically replace your speakers. It, it may save you some time, expense, and hassle. So here's your fan right here, bottom left of my screen, and there's the vent to the outside, and here's your heat sink that goes over here over your CPU. So to get your fan out, you have a screw here, a screw here, and it plugs into the motherboard right here. So in a computer, whenever you have a wire here, you don't wanna pull on the wires if at all possible, they, they can break. We wanna manipulate the plugs as much as possible. So this white plug going into the port here on the motherboard, it's got a grip on either side. So you can grab this with your fingernails or a pry tool, and you should be able to pull that out of this port without pulling on those wires. So that gets your fan out. After that, you can clean it out, replace it, whatever you're here to do. If you're here to just replace the fan, then that's a pretty easy operation. If you're trying to clean out this area, maybe you're seeing some overheating, uh, you would definitely wanna clean that out, blow it out as much as possible. Also remember to get your vent here, clean that out real well. And if you are experiencing overheating with your computer, it probably is going to be a great idea for you to reapply thermal paste. In that case, you would remove these four screws from the heat sink over your CPU that would take this heat sink up, and then you would clean off all the old thermal paste before you put new high-end thermal paste down. So if that's why you're here, I will have a video up top. Also below in the description, it'll be a video tutorial showing you how to reapply thermal paste. Again, you wanna clean off all the old stuff. You don't wanna put new paste on top of old paste. And then you don't wanna to put too much new paste down. If you put too much down, it could actually lock in the heat instead of facilitating its, its, its movement out of the computer. So I guess the last things to shout out are the uh, miscellaneous things. You have a USB board here that's connected by a ribbon cable under the hard drive, plugs into the motherboard here. Uh, you have your LCD cable that plugs in here. Uh, you have your ribbon cable here for, for the keyboard. Uh, keep in mind when operating these type of ribbon cable clips, guys, these are very fragile. Uh, you have the black clip and the white port. The way this works is you would slide a, a very flat pry tool underneath this black clip from the right here, underneath there, and gently pop it up. It's going to open like a book cover. And then once that opens, the ribbon cable can slide out of it. And that goes for all these ribbon cable connections. If you break that black clip, you may find it very difficult to find a replacement, which would mean you need a motherboard replacement at, at that point because that cable will no longer secure in there. So be very careful with those. As far as the motherboard, if you're looking to get the motherboard out after unplugging all the ribbon cables, uh, taking out your, your fan, your heatsink assembly, the Wi-Fi card, 
uh, this cable here, the LCD cable. After unplugging everything from your motherboard, these are the screws you need to remove to get the motherboard out of the computer for a motherboard replacement. So I hope this video was helpful. It went over most of the major components you can access here. Um, as a side note, the only thing I forgot is your LCD assembly. You would undo the screws in your hinges. Uh, make sure that your Wi-Fi antenna wire are free and the LCD cable is free. And then you can get the LCD cable off. But that's the teardown disassembly video for the HP 255 G5. So that's the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials. And for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation. And there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.